As the 1980s dawned, ambitious plans were being drawn up to revive the derelict site of the old Smithfield and Grand Central Hotel. The modern vision of a shopping centre was about to become a reality for Belfast's retail-starved shoppers. Meanwhile, away from the big city, the retail scene across Northern Ireland's towns and villages remained largely unchanged. And in Coleraine, the weekly market and a certain grocery store stayed central to the daily shop. Moody's were a family firm which existed on the same site for about 75 years. Raymond and Mervyn and Mrs Moody ran the shop. It was an absolute treasure trove. You would go into Moody's shop and it was just so quaint, you know. It was nearly like a general store that you get in the, in the Midwest of America because she went in and all these lovely, wee, remember the lovely wee shelves up with tea in them and they had, uh, you know, flour, if you wanted flour. Well, you could buy bags of flour but they also sold things loose. The bargain store is open, come inside. It was almost like a delicatessen before the word was even invented. You could get anything and everything in Moody's. If it wasn't available on the shelves, one of the brothers disappeared into the back and out it came. They used to slice bacon, cured bacon, on the bacon slicer and then if you wanted cheese, it was sliced as well and there was no washing it in between. Now if I use a bacon slicer um, with, with for raw meat or even for cooked meat, you have to take the whole thing apart and fill this form to say you've taken the thing apart, that you've sprayed it, you're sanitised it and sign it off and that there. And you know, and still then it was cheese, it was bacon, it was everything. Didn't matter, you know, it was fine. Built up a resistance, I think. <laughs> Some more. The there was a personal service in the shop. You just came in with your little list, got your order fulfilled, and it was delivered to your house by the man that you knew, the man who owned the shop. And this was the same in probably over a dozen um, little grocery shops in the town at that time. The other one was Michael Derry's, you know, where you went in and there's one bit in that footage where there's a guy, he comes up with a chain and throws that down onto the counter and then somebody else is standing caressing a chainsaw. You know, and I'm thinking, well, hello, where else would you get that? It was actually quite scary, but fascinating at the same time. But in 1981, a new shopping experience was about to hit Coleraine's commercial hub. In scenes reminiscent of today's retail revolution, consumers were abandoning the high street and embracing the out-of-town supermarket. To me, the day that crazy prices arrived in Coleraine was a very, very sad day. The first big supermarket in the town just on the edge of the main shopping street uh, with a, a dedicated car park. People had got a wee bit lazy. The town had developed somewhat. There were now housing estates being built on the very edge of the town. So people came into town in their motor cars. And rather than go to the little grocery shop, they went to the big shop. I mean, I'm sorry, but I um, hate supermarkets, right? Now, I go to them, don't get me wrong, but I just hate them. I hate the whole concept of them. She so went to Moody's, she went to Moody's, and you get those beautiful smells. You go to a supermarket, it smells disinfectant. And I remember Crazy Prices had a walk in cold room where you had to push back those slats and go in and get your milk. I'm thinking, <laughs> I don't want, I don't want, I want to, everybody's talking about this is the greatest thing on earth. Oh, they'll walk in cold room, think, oh, yeah, they'll walk in fridge, whoop they do this large supermarket lies just outside the traditional shopping and business center of the town. It's a world away from the homely atmosphere of the family grocery. There can be no peace and quiet in here. You're bombarded on all sides by bright lights and advertisements asking you to buy this, that and the other. It's no wonder that the customers sometimes look perplexed. Half the time you're being served in a supermarket by some surly 18 year old with their head down, beep, beep, no. And if you ask them anything, they're like, I don't know. And that's it, so there's not really, I think that what's happened to Korean is happening to other times, it's just generic now. It's got the big shops, the big clothes shops, 
where people are just wage slaves and they don't care because, look, they're working for a big conglomerate. It's going to make plenty of money anyway.